Radio Great 12, welcome to this How to EGD lesson. We are looking and preparing ourselves for the final exams and I'm busy talking you through your paper 2. At this point, this is the first lesson looking at the mechanical analytics and we're we working through the Eastern Cape paper 2 of 2024. All right. Now, regardless whether you have the paper with you or not, I'll try and put it in the description as a download. You are going to benefit from looking at the tips that's given to you, of course, for more in-depth discussions, head on over to the EGD Masterclass series on how to EGD. With that said, let's get straight into discussing and helping you understand this mechanical analytics. Now, the advantage is you're going to have 10 minutes reading time, and please spend some time going through this. They will um, have your given and instructions at the top, you're looking at about 30 points here that's up for grabs and so most of what is asked here is going to be in the actual information sheet that is given and to work us through this I'm going to work you through the questions in this paper and let's come up with the answers together so first things first understand and remember that all questions in this paper will be third angle orthographic projection so if you're looking at your projection Right, you're going to have your front view at the bottom, you'll have your top view here, and your actual left view will be on this side if we had uh, to project it. Just in, in, in principle, remember this, because here is given to us two views, okay? And we are going to have to figure out which views that are. So if you remember third angle of the graph projection, that's going to be helpful. We're going to have our information page here at the bottom. That's going to have a lot of answers in locked in. So let's start by looking at the first question. They ask you who, are, who approved this drawing. And it will be in this table, for instance, there, clearly visible for you. This was approved by Sam. And the date is also, if they ask checked, it would be Carl. Drawn will be a All right. The engineering company that's doing that, there's another specification, all dimensions on millimeters. They've given you the scale here. Then they've highlighted the program to be used, the file name, drawing number, as well as the con quantity required. Um, a lot of times questions are asked on, around that. In, in this question paper, it's exactly that. Who approved was Sam. How many revisions was made? That's going to be in the revision list. Only one has been made. There's still space for a second one, and you could add three, four more, but that's only one that's been made. So one revision, which drawing program was used to create, there it's specified, AutoCAD. So we already got three marks just by reading. Number four, how many bracket parts are used? Now here, ladies and gentlemen, you have to read clearly. This question asks, how many parts are used to manufacture the bracket? Now, if you look here, how many different parts do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. If you write six, it's going to be wrong. Because the question reads, how many parts? So you have to go and look at the quantity count. One, two, three, four, plus another four, plus another four. The total amount is 12. And that's the question. How many parts are used to manufacture a bracket? In fact, we've got 12 parts. If that question read how many different parts, it would have been six because there's six different. But there's four M20 nuts, four M20 studs, and that gives us 12 in total. Some of you, I'm doing this lesson with my own kids in class, and some of them even made that mistake. Um, so please remember that. What material is used for the bracket? You're going to just read that there. Cast iron. Uh, what does the abbreviation S face stand for? So... In this drawing, there is a reference here as S-Face, and it's referring to this part of that drawing. There's two of them, and it's specified diameter 39 times 5 S-Face. S-Face stands for spot face, okay? Mm -hmm. In an Afrikaans verhaal, of course, it's called this S-Face stands for, I'll write here, spot face. In Afrikaans, it says call, that stands for call, flock. Okay? And it's in fact referring to this, this surface, that there. That surface with the height there 
is called a spot face, call flock. And what is it? The diameter 39 is the diameter of it. And the um, 5 is the height of it. Okay, so their B is going to be 5 millimeters. And there's the 39. So the S face, like it said here, diameter 39 and 5 millimeters is that height there. And then the label spot face. Does that make sense to you? Okay, please make sure you know that. Name the convention at E. Okay, this was a really tough one. Okay, you have to consider here that they are, that part of this drawing, according to our list here, is studs. There are four of them. And nuts, four of them. So what we're seeing here is not a bolt. Okay, it's not a bolt. And if you look at your view two, you can actually see, because there's that line there, this is a stud that, that screws into this part and into this part and then it gets a, a nut over it. Does that make sense? So you all know how, what a stud looks. It's got two parts with screw theory on. And so they're asking me what is E then? And that is external screw thread. External screw thread. Now, Afrikaans, bite the screw thread. Yeah. External screw thread. Bite the, because it is a stud that it is referring to. And if you think of a stud, that um, outside of the stud has got the screw thread. That's what you're seeing there. Okay, so I'm not drawing it now fully. But there's the external screw thread that they are referring to there. Does that make sense? It's a stud with a nut on it. Okay, next one. Uh, what would view 2 be called? So here we have our two views. Let's zoom out a little bit. So now thinking back on my explanation at the beginning. We've got two views here. It's drawn in third angle to graphic projection. So if I have two views, it, it's going to be the front and the right view. View 1, my primary view is my front view. View 2 is my right view. Okay. Happy? If it was these two that they drew, then of course this would have been front and left. Nee. But we have a primary view and a secondary view. Front and right. Okay. Third angle to graphic projection. Then what is the feature, feature at F? Okay, this a lot of you got wrong here. This feature here at F is the oil hole. Oily gat. Okay. And that is to get uh, some oil in here if we have a bush. Or, uh, the, or there is already a bush there. You can see the bush. The lines of the bush. It's to give oil into the shaft that will go through there. Okay. So oily gat. Then they ask, what is the purpose of the gaps indicated by G? Um, there it is. It's this, this, this one and that one there. Okay. So let's say, for instance, this bracket is assembled. That is a tolerance for maybe the size of the shaft or the bush. When we clamp it, when we tie it down, there's a little bit of a movement there, a tolerance between the parts and that so as i tighten it that might get smaller there uh, uh, so there's some tolerance there that you can take note of okay tolerance clearance of, toler of tolerance all right then the next question how many threaded holes are there in the assembly okay how many threaded holes are there and so here we have our one and two remember this is a view of the same two holes and here we have we can see them, but there's actually two. So it's four in total. So one, two, three, and four. Four threaded holes. Good. Um, then de determine the complete dimensions at A, B, and C. So this was an interesting one. And um, it's not taking my ruler and measuring it. Then you're going to get it wrong. Okay? It is, we're going to be able to determine it. So let's find A first. Um, help me out. Oh, there it is. Okay. So there's A. If you look at this picture, we have a front view and a right view. Do you see that this is two ribs of a web? So this is the 16 year of this rib when I look at it from the front. 
And if I look from the right hand side, this one is now here. So it's going to be 16 and 16. Okay. B. Mm. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's the spot face measurement. Diameter to nine times five. It's five millimeters there. Okay, happy. And then C. All right, it's this length here. For that one, we know from the, uh, the top there, that's 20. There's 258 all the way to this point here. And then using my other view from this center, um, we have to try and get the, this distance is diameter 41, which is going to be how much? 20 and a half. And where does that 68 go from? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. There's the line. So it's just that line. So this radius here is 51. So we can just take that from here. So it's 51. 51 here. That 51, which we got here, plus the 258 here, plus that 20, and your answer is 329 millimeters. Okay. How many surfaces need to be machined? Uh, you've all known this by now. There's a machining symbol. There's a machining symbol. There's a machining symbol. There's one. There's one. So that's already five. All you have to then double check is if there's any surfaces that we've missed. Like for instance, um, this surface, do you agree it's already that surface? Me? On the right view, I'm going to see that surface. And so they've already ticked it. I don't have to recount that. But sometimes, let's say there was um, two behind each other. You sometimes have to add one. But I've looked at this. There's only the ones that's given. So it is still five. All right. Five surfaces that must be machined. Um, with reference to the tolerance, determine the maximum and minimum dimensions at D. So there we have them here at the top. It says 106, so plus 25, so it's going to be 106, 25. That's going to be our maximum. Our minimum is going to be 105, minus that 0 0.9, 0 0.0397. There. There's our maximum. If I add 25 plus 0, 0.25, and if I subtract it, it's going to be 105.97. That's an e easy sum for you to do. And then they're definitely going to ask you to draw different conventions. So the first one, number 16, in the space provided below, I missed one here. Number th I missed number 13. What SI unit is the dimensions presented in? And Afrikaans, what are SE in here? All these measurements are presented in millimeters. Because it's a big question, what SI, that's a standard. It's asking standard uh, measurements. Nee. It's always going to be in millimeters, that answer. So number 16 here, in the space provided below, draw in Nitria and the conventions for a spur gear. Okay, so they have um, drawn for you the front view. You have to draw the right view. That a lot of us missed here. So our right view here of that gear is going to be at the same. Maybe you can add for yourself some construction lines here, but it's going to be at the same Right there, okay, and then we have in line with that, we're gonna have a line in line with that one, we're gonna have a line in line with this end here. There's another line also in line with that one. There is another line, all right, and then we have actually in the space where I draw neat free hand convention of a spur gear, okay, so actually. Um, I've now drawn it sectioned. <laughs> Alright, if it wasn't sectioned, just check me on this one. Would have been needed in detail. Okay. Alright, then number 17 in the space below, draw a neat free hand, the sun symbol 
for the projection system used. Ladies and gentlemen, can I give you a big tip? Here's four marks for free for you. This question, if they ask you for the projection system for this paper, paper three, they've given you the answer on page five. Because on the mechanical assembly, they are always going to give you that symbol. So really, you can't get it wrong. Center lines, I'm just redrawing really that. I'm not even thinking. Two circles. Klar. Four, four marks. Given to you in this paper, they've given it to you. Draw it exactly as it is on that paper. If they ask for the projection symbol in this paper too, it's always going to be on that last question. Radio, there's a lot more uh, sun symbols that I think you should know and be able to draw because they're definitely going to ask you to draw a symbol. They're also going to ask you to draw the projection symbol and a lot of this determining your measurements, um, knowing what different abbreviations stands for, um, being able to interpret what is given. It's going to be all part of your mechanical analytics and so take time and prepare well. All of you can do well with this question. Thank you for watching. Now it's your